Jake here. Thank you for taking a trip to the past with me. The original podcast version of The Americans will be released weekly, but if you don't want to wait, then go to jakebible.substack.com and become a paid subscriber. You'll receive access to all of The Americans as well as early release novels, audiobooks, and other exclusive extras. That's jakebible.substack.com. Now enjoy the original podcast production of The Americans. Cheers. Warning. This podcast reading is for mature audiences only. You will not be warned again. Welcome to the podcast reading of Jake Bible's The Americans, book two in the Dead Mech Apex Trilogy. The Americans is a side quill to Dead Mech, meaning it takes place simultaneously with book one. You can listen to this novel first or start with Dead Mech. Go to jakebible.com for more information on this podcast, Dead Mech, and other fiction by Jake Bible. Enjoy. Hey y'all, welcome back to more of The Americans. Thanks for joining me once again. Sorry about last week, just technical internet things, computer problems, close call nightmares. It just didn't happen last week, but uh, everything's good. So, whew, I can breathe easy. <laughs> um, let's see, the main thing I want to say today, before we get right into this episode, is thank you to everyone who has backed Stark, um, the cool new illustrated novella project I have going. If you don't know about Stark, go to jakebible.com, click on the cover for Stark, and that'll take you to the Kickstarter project. It is fully funded, but here's the deal, folks. Like I say in the project description, if we get to double the money, i.e. $2,400, then everybody who um, has backed it and is getting a reward will get a reward for Stark and then the second novella, Rash. If we triple the money, i.e. get to $3,600, then we will, everybody, all the backers will get triple rewards. That means they'll get the same reward for Stark rash and done the third novella all right so it's definitely worth your while to keep spreading the word to keep getting this funded to keep bringing some money into kickstarter so that um we can get all three novellas backed in one campaign that would be outstanding that means i won't have to really have as much um lag time between them because i will have to fund the other two also um, so that's just something to think about there. Hey, if you've got friends, family, coworkers, whatever, who dig some serious, ultra violent, hard boiled kind of crime, crazy stuff, then they're going to like this and they should back it because there's some cool rewards and go check it out. So jakebible.com click on well, the Stark cover. Yeah. That's what it is. And it'll take you right to the Kickstarter campaign. So everything will be groovy. The other thing I really want to talk about is I have had a lot of people contact me about um, whether or not I will be podcasting the third and final novel in the whole Apex Trilogy series. You know, there's Dead Mech, there's The Americans, and then the third one will be Metal and Ash. And, um, you know, I've had a lot of people say they understand, they get it, and they, you know, no problem, but they would love for me to podcast it anyways. Continuity is one thing. Also, there's a lot of people who podcasting, listening to podcasts is the way they get their books. Um, there are people who, A, may not have time to be able to read, so they listen to the stories while they're commuting or while they're at work doing whatever they need to do. And, you know, there are some folks that um, are visually impaired, so listening is the only way they get their books. So I understand all of those concerns. So I'm going to say this right now. I'm not definitively saying I won't podcast the third novel. Okay. I'm not definitively saying I will either. <laughs> we'll leave that open. There's going to be a lot of factors that go into that. But just so you understand, it's not because I'm not willing to. It really is a time thing. This takes a lot of time. As you can see, I didn't get an episode out last week because I didn't have time to fix everything that went wrong in order to get an episode, you know, edited and out, you know, 
out in the feed. So, you know, it's just one episode, punk, gone, didn't happen. So if you can imagine doing an entire novel, <laughs> we're talking hours upon hours upon hours upon hours upon hours upon hours of work that goes into producing the hours upon hours upon hours upon hours of work that's actually published, you know, put into the feed. So it's not so much a matter of I don't want to. It's not so much a matter of I want to hold everyone hostage and just buy the book. It isn't that. But realistically, you have to understand on a good week, it takes about five hours to, well, <laughs> to produce the one episode. Sometimes, I mean, a 20 minute episode can take me two or three hours of work throughout the week just to get everything done. So it gets in the feed and gets out there and you guys can get it. I mean, that's that's a lot of work when I don't have time. <laughs> that's That's all there is to it. I'm not a full time writer. That's just the you know that's that's just the breaks folks i don't write full time because i have to have a day job in order to put food on the table feed my family you know with that food on the table as i just said put a roof over everybody's head clothe all you know just the little things you know whatnot so that's where it's at it's a time thing we'll see if i truly can make it happen i will make it happen um yeah, I think that's about all I can be said on that. So I've heard everybody. I've listened to what you're saying. I understand everyone's concerns. And trust me, this isn't me just being a dick saying, I don't want to do it anymore. Arr, I don't want to podcast. I'm not going to do it because it's not worth it. It's not enough money. It's it's not so much that. It's I have to prioritize my time. And I'm a writer first. As I've said from the get-go of everything, I am a writer first then a podcaster. So if one of those things has to go away, <laughs> it's the podcasting. Because if I don't write, there's no podcast. That's all there is to it. So writing first, that's just what has to come first. And if there's no time for podcasting, then I have no time. And that's just the reality of it. All right. Well, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, no, it's not crazy, silly me. Hey, heads up, folks. You're listening to The Americans. Some of you have just discovered me through The Americans. Some of you know me through because of Dead Mac. Well, Dead Mac is now part of the Amazon Kindle Lending Library. That means if you are an Amazon Prime member, and I highly advise you are, this is not, I don't get paid for this. This is not me trying to push one thing over another. This is me as a consumer, as a user. I love Amazon Prime. It's what, 79 bucks a year. You get free two-day shipping. You have no idea how much money that has saved me over this year. Just the past two weeks with Christmas presents and stuff. Oh my God, folks. Holy crap. I mean, seriously, I have made up <laughs> that $79 just in the past two weeks. Easy peasy. So if you aren't an Amazon Prime member, you really should think about it. 79 bucks, you get access to all the instant streaming videos that they have, basically Amazon's version of Netflix. You get all kinds of crazy stuff. Plus, if you have a Kindle, then you can use their Amazon lending, uh, Kindle lending library and once a month get a free book. And you can read that book. You get a month to read it and then it disappears. But you once a month, you get a free book to read. You can pick from hundreds, probably thousands by now, since they just opened it up to all the independent publishers, thousands of titles to pick from. All right. Dead Mech is one of those. So if you haven't gotten your Kindle copy of Dead Mech, become a Prime member. Voila. You can get it for a month to read it. Love it. And then, you know, there you have it. You don't get to keep it. That's the one thing, okay? You have the book goes away after the month, but it is a great chance to read it, you know, see if you want it. And if you want to buy it, you know, so you have it forever, well then, awesome. Thank you. I'd love that. But I just wanted to let you know that. So if you know anyone with a Kindle who's a Prime member, you can mention, hey, read Jake Bible's Dead Mech, because it's awesome. And then everyone will be happy. It'll make things better in the world. Trust me. It's true. All right. I think that's it. Um... Yeah, I'll leave it at that. I'll stop rambling. Let's get into this episode. It's a good one. You're gonna like it. After this, there's only two more episodes. Two more episodes, people!
Episode 32 will be the last one. This is episode 30. That's pretty crazy. All right. And I should be able to get one out uninterrupted for the rest. That means the last one would go out on Christmas. If it doesn't happen, you know why. Because it's freaking Christmas, people. So if it doesn't happen that week, then New Year's um, weekend it'll happen, okay? But hopefully I'll be able to get it out and everyone will have a nice little Christmas present. The finale, the end of The Americans. And you're going to like the end. Oh, yes, you are. All right, that's enough rambling, like I said before. Hope everybody's having a good holiday season. Hope you're staying warm, staying fed, having some good times out there, friends, family, whatnot. All right, enjoy the episode. and. Thanks, everyone. You always rock. You're the best fans ever. Cheers, y'all. Chapter 33 Lieutenant Mathers checked the general's bandages and shook her head, knowing there really wasn't anything she could do to help the man. When the snakes had attacked, she had been able to get the general inside and the HAV sealed up, but other than the two ghosts and one tech that had already been in the vehicle, no one else made it. Still no calm? No, the tech said, not even bothering to check the system. Are you sure? Mathers growled. The tech reached out and activated the comm system. Nothing but static erupted from the speakers. I'd love to leave too, the tech said. I'm still ranking officer here, Tunis, Mathers shouted, so watch the attitude. Ranking officer of what? The fucking snake food? Tunis snapped back. If they were coming, they'd be here by now. You heard the screams and shots from above, right? Those aren't sounds of a successful rescue, especially when no one fucking shows up to rescue us. Mathers jumped to her feet and closed the distance between herself and Tunis. Whoa, a ghost named Welch shoved between the two before they could get violent. Same side, folks, he said calmly. Just take some deep breaths and remember that. Tunis glared at Welch, then struggled to climb further up in the HAV and get as much space between himself and the rest as possible. You all saw that, Mathers snarled. You are witnesses. We have witnessed nothing but horror, the other ghost, a woman named Eddington, answered. Your little spat with Tunis doesn't even register, so sit the fuck down, Mathers. The lieutenant puffed up and got right in her face. Don't become part of the problem. Eddington laughed and gently placed a hand against Mathers' chest. Back away slowly, LT. You may outrank me, but you know I can whip your ass in a heartbeat. Mathers glared but didn't argue. She angrily removed Eddington's hand from her chest and sat back down with the wounded general. Blades, people, Owens ordered in a firm whisper over the comm. We know their skin can be pierced, so form your suits appropriately. Those ghosts that hadn't already done so did it once and all proceeded to repel with caution, halogens trying to pierce the inky blackness of the snake nest. Movement to the left, a tech whispered, wedged between two ghosts for safety. All eyes shifted to the left. Movement on the right, another whispered, and all eyes shifted to the right. Nothing. Gone, the first tech whispered, but the whisper turned to a scream as a three-meter-wide head shot from a hole in the pit wall and grabbed the two ghosts and the tech in its jaws, piercing all three clean through with its fangs. The snake jerked back and the three were yanked out of sight, their screams still filling the calm. Free fall, now! Owen shouted, and he loosened his grip on the BC cable and began to slide at a rapid speed. Other ghosts did the same, adjusting their gloves on the fly to compensate for the heat that built up from the friction. Snake heads all around shot from the sides of the pit. Two more ghosts were pulled screaming into the pit's side. Three ghosts and a tech were struck but able to fight the snakes off. I see the HAV, a ghost shouted. It's on end but looks sealed and intact. Those left, five ghosts and two techs, slammed down on the HAV and secured their lines to the vehicle, prepping them for an immediate extraction. Those that were bitten on the way down hung limply from their cables. Get that back hatch open! Owens yelled, keeping his eyes trained above for more attacks. Get the wounded inside right away! The hatch flew open and Lieutenant Mathers poked her head out. Oh, thank God! The general's in bad shape. We need to get him out of here and up. She was interrupted as a cobra struck, grabbing a ghost and pulling him off the HAV. In! Now! Owens yelled, shoving Mathers out of the way so he could get everyone inside. The colonel was the last in line and barely got the hatch shut before another strike. The sound of the snake's head slamming into the HAV reverberated through the hold. Where's the general? Owens asked. Down here, Eddington shouted from below. Owens carefully made his way down to the general and shook his head once he saw the state the man was in. Is this everyone? Yes, sir, Mathers responded from above. We're all that we're able to get inside. The rest were taken by those things. 
Colonel Smithfield and his team didn't make it down here? They made it down here, sir, Tuna said, looking at the others and activating his surveillance hollow. The image showed Colonel Smithfield's body plummeting from above and slamming into the HAV. Other bodies followed, and all were swooped down on by snakes, snatched up and whisked away into the darkness. They just didn't make it alive. Bad taste, Tunis, Mather scolded. Don't start again, you two, Welch warned. Okay, that's enough, Owen said. We have cables attached to the HAV. Can we get any comm signal out of here? No, sir, Tunis replied. There's something in the walls that's blocking all signals. Guess we have to open the hatch, Owen sighed. But those things, Mathers cried. Don't worry, Owens insisted, pulling a flare gun from his pack. I just need to get one shot straight up. You folks cover me, and we'll be out of here in no time. There's the signal, Melissa cried, slapping Desmond on the back. Move this thing and pull them up. Who the fuck put you in charge? Desmond snapped. Melissa backhanded him upside the head. I did. Shut the fuck up and drive. Desmond grumbled but couldn't help a smile at Melissa's assertiveness. He gave the signal for the other HAVs to reverse and pull back on the cables. Billy stood behind the girls, staring at the dwindling sunlight on the horizon. Man, we aren't going to make it. Hush, Beth scolded. We'll make it. The HAVs geared down and struggled against the weight of the one below. Physics was not on their side. Suddenly, a cable snapped, sending the HAV it was attached to speeding backwards into the HAV behind it snapping that cable and sending it flying backwards also. Hold tight, Desmond yelled, and Melissa, Beth, and the others braced themselves as their HAV struggled against the new weight. This is going to put a hurt on the mag drive. And that would be sunset, Billy announced. Anyone see anything? The last rays of light faded from the sky, and the landscape became nothing but dark shapes set against the black sky. How close is the HAV? Beth asked quietly. Why are you whispering? Melissa asked in a mock whisper. Because it's fucking spooky out there, Billy answered for her. Desmond rolled his eyes and checked his gauge. Only about 20 meters to go before the HAV crests the side of the pit. Maybe five minutes? What's that? Billy asked, pointing out the windshield. A lit up pit and then darkness? Melissa said, annoyed. Fuck off. Look past the pit. Do you see silhouettes on the hills? I don't see anything, Beth answered, squinting her eyes. It's too dark. How can none of you see that? Billy shouted. There's something moving up on that hill. If I switch on all the halogens, will you shut up? Desmond asked. What's your name again? Desmond, Private Desmond McHale. Yes, Desmond. Turning on all the lights would be great, Billy answered. Thank you. Desmond tapped at the console, and the HAV's halogens lit up the landscape. Billy squeaked out a less-than-manly scream and Melissa, Beth, and Desmond gasped. I really wish you had been wrong, Melissa whispered. On the far side of the pit, shapes moved. Large shapes. Shapes that didn't seem to fit reason or any known animal. The shapes shrunk away from the light, but didn't completely avoid it. What are they? Beth whispered. What the fuck are they? The creatures were twice the size of an elephant, some with long arms tipped with pinchers or claws, some with flailing tentacles that ended in more tentacles. Most looked as if they had been fighting. Their rough skin was covered in open, oozing sores, many at least a meter across. I think I'm going to be sick, Billy choked, rushing back to the laboratory. The HAV is almost out of the pit, Desmond said quietly. Calm crackled to life. This is Colonel Owens. Can you read me? We read you, sir, Desmond responded. Great. As soon as we are on solid ground, we'll need all available medics over here right away. Sir, th this is Beth Laughlin. Th there's a situation up here. Situation? What? More snakes? No, sir. Looks like the bigger predators that Jagabundo warned about. Are they attacking? None of the creatures moved closer. They just gathered at the far side of the pit, waiting. No, sir. They, they aren't moving right now. The HAV's end crested the pit's edge and began to tip towards the ground. Instantly, the creatures pounced, their speed surprising everyone considering their size and that most of them seemed to lack legs. Sir, Colonel Owens, Desmond shouted, activating the HAV's weapon system. It was over in a blink of an eye. The creatures converged on the HAV, ripped its hull apart, and yanked the screaming Americans out, jamming them into open mouths that were filled with rows and rows of teeth. What the fuck? Owens screamed. Fire! Don't worry about us! Just fucking fire! The calm went dead. Melissa, Beth, and Desmond, now joined by everyone in the HAV, watched in horror as all personnel from the rescued HAV was devoured. 
their screams cut short by a million sharp teeth. What do we do now? Desmond whispered. Uh, we keep the lights on and slowly back away, Melissa suggested. Who's the ranking officer now? Beth asked. You are, Desmond responded. We lost everyone else. All that's left are drivers and techs. None are above private. Desmond turned and looked at Beth and Melissa. You'd be the closest thing to command rank we have. The two girls looked at each other and frowned. You make the call, Melissa said. You sure? You've got three people in your brain. I'm just one. Whatever you decide, make it quick, Desmond shouted as the creatures moved away from the destroyed HAV and turned their attention on the remaining vehicles. Go, Beth yelled. Tell everyone to back up and get out of here. If we get separated, just meet at the original rendezvous point. Desmond reversed as fast as he could while still trying to avoid hitting the HAVs behind him. All vehicles are complying. Yeah, I bet they are, Billy cried. Can we shoot those things, please? Melissa took control of the weapon system and targeted the creatures, firing as many rockets as, at once as she could. The HAVs in the rear did the same. Streams of flame and smoke lit up the nightscape, but were lost upon impact. What happened? Beth asked. Melissa checked the readings. Nothing. Nothing happened. Small explosions could be heard and the creatures lit up internally as the rockets detonated. Everyone held their breath waiting for the creatures to collapse. But none did. Are they moving faster? Billy gulped. They are, aren't they? I think those rockets just acted like fucking scabs for those things. They're all jacked up and coming right at us, Melissa yelled. I'm out of rockets. Fire all guns, Beth ordered over the comm. Tear them apart. Large caliber rounds with tracers interspersed streamed towards the creatures, ripping into their undulating flesh. Chunks of black meat flew everywhere. Tentacles fell to the ground and the night filled with unearthly shrieks. Looks like that's working, Melissa cheered. The rest of the Americans cheered with her until a tech spoke up. Are the pieces moving, too? Everyone's celebration was cut short as they watched as a tentacle began to drag itself along the ground, itch warming its way quickly in pursuit of the reversing convoy. Turn this thing around and get us out of here, Beth shouted. Desmond spun the HAV about, tossing everyone into each other and against the sides of the hull. The vehicle rammed into a hillside and Desmond struggled to get it loose. We're stuck! They're coming right at us! The tech screamed from the hold, his face pressed against a porthole. Sweet God! Beth concentrated on the scattered BC of the General's destroyed HAV, splitting it again and again until the air was filled with thousands of razor-sharp shards. She brought the shards screaming towards their HAV, shredding everything in its path. God, I love that move, Melissa grinned. The ground was covered in black chunks of creature and various oozing liquids. Now let's fucking go before all those little pieces become mini-monsters! The chunks began to squirm before Melissa had finished talking, but Desmond was able to free the HAV from its entanglement, and they rocketed away, trying to catch up with the others. You've been listening to the podcast reading of Jake Bible's The Americans. This novel and recording are protected under whatever latest, greatest Creative Commons license is out there currently. Share this all you want. Just don't even try to make a buck off it without the express permission of the author, me. I hope you enjoyed this episode. For more information, please go to jakebible.com. Thanks for listening. Cheers. Thank you for listening to this episode of the re-release of the original podcast production of The Americans. Don't want to wait each week for a new episode? Go to jakebible.substack.com and become a paid subscriber. Want more audiobooks? Go to jakebible.com for info and access to dozens of Jake Bible fiction audiobooks and ebooks. Cheers.